Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Gas Cities, where we do know our purpose. We know our purpose. We know our individual purpose in life. And what does that to be? What is our purpose in this world as people of faith? What is our known purpose in faith? To love others. That is the one and most important purpose that we have. And there, when we love one another, all these other things will be taken care of. Is that not true? Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added unto you. And to seek the kingdom of God is to seek love. If we love, all these things will be taken care of. We do not have to find an individual purpose, like I need to be president of the United States. That is my God-given purpose, to be president of the United States. I tell you, that is my purpose, people. <laughs> oh, I have a naysayer in here. Shaking the head, no. Well, you know what? I'm not on that fast track. I'm not heading in that direction. I don't believe it. Therefore, I'm not going to act on it. But the most important thing is to love. That is what we're called and we are commanded to do. The scripture says that Jesus said, No greater love has one for another but to lay one's life down for another. And Jesus showed us that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him may have life and have it eternal. See, that's very key. To our existence here and beyond. And I would say that when we enter into life with Jesus the Christ, we, that's our born again experience, and therefore we just transcend from this life to the next. It's a continuation of that born-again experience to be in Christ. Whatever we believe, we act. Whatever we believe, we act on. We can say we believe certain things, but the real belief is in our action. Let's hear what today's scripture from 1 John says. Chapter 3, verse 16 to 24. John says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth 
and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. See, we like to quote, no greater love does anyone have except that person's willing to lay down their life for another. And usually we say that within a certain context. Now, this is the NIV that I've read, and it says, lay down our lives for our brothers. Now, we might take that literally and just believe that it's our own family blood, that that's who we are called to love and to die for. But then there's a little broadening of that circle. We have an affiliation family. If we're part of a service club or we're part of a, a group that we find ourselves having an affinity with, we may say, I'll lay my life down for my brothers, my family that I'm affiliated with. We also say, I will lay down my life for my fellow brother nationally. That I will, anybody who is an American person, I will lay my life down for. And then we put a stop. Why do we care about those people over there? Why do we care about those people? They're not Americans. Why should we care? But I believe Jesus calls us to broaden the circle even farther. Sometimes we think ethnically. I will lay down my life for my ethnicity, whatever that is. But I believe it even goes farther than that. When Jesus said, no greater love has someone than to lay their life down for another. He's talking about all people. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. What is good is good. What is bad is bad, regardless of where we come from. We do well to keep that in mind. We who claim faith in Jesus Christ, we believe in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe in Jesus, therefore we got to believe this. We must. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about this. People are people, and God loves them. <clears throat> There is no them and us. It's all of us. Now, when John says, if you've got material, if we have material possessions, and we see someone in need, but have no pity on them, 
We basically have no love. How can we say we have the love of Christ and there are people in need, but we don't share? Now this goes beyond just someone that walks down the street who has no clothes and, and you've got a lot of clothes in your closet and, and it looks like your clothes could fit them. It's not just that. It's about governments. It's about nations. It's about... Now what does... What do people say on the news at times that we will protect our interests? We will protect our interests. If something's happening in an area of the world that has no interest to us, financially, resource, resources, and so forth, we will not send concentrated help to stop whatever is going on that is harming people because it's none of our business. But if it had, if we had an interest there, we would do that nationally. And our national government represents us. <clears throat> but we of faith in Jesus, if we listen to Jesus, it is our business. It is our interest. And all believers care about all people of the world in their situation. We cannot compartmentalize what we believe. We cannot say that they don't matter because they don't give us anything in return. And this is a struggle for us. This is a struggle for us as human beings who have real ideas, we have thoughts, we have opinions, we have sensibilities that we hear other people say, oh, they shouldn't do this. And then we get riled up. But do we filter it through the person of Jesus Christ? We say we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and we are to love one another as he commanded us. That's what he said. But it's easy to get comfortable. It is easy to be comfortable and say, well, that's not my area. We could say, well, God ordained them to experience those sufferings, and that's just the way it is. That was their lot that God put them in. But is it? Because we could have just as easily been born in those situations. We could have been born to people who struggle in life and they're in this cycle of poverty and so forth that we could have just stayed there. But there are many of us who may have been in that and people reached down, reached over, and they said, hey, you can go in this direction. You don't have to continue living in this situation. We've all been helped by someone. And that's by the grace of God. That is not by our own merits. They've invited us. They've given us opportunity. And we've either said yes or we've said no to that help. 
And all we're called to do is offer a hand. Help people who have need. You know, that, I say it often, that's the beautiful thing about our educational system. It doesn't matter where you come from, but you get the same help. You get the same opportunities based on where you're at. And there's no reason why anyone cannot succeed. if they accept it, if they work with it. In the same way, when we love one another, people's lives change. All people's lives have the possibility of changing. And we do not compartmentalize to where those people are not worthy, those people are not worthy. We do not have that place, we do not have that power, we do not have that calling to point out who deserves it, who doesn't. If we believe in Jesus, we love. We love regardless of where people come from. Because imagine, once upon a time, the people who were the believers only were in Jerusalem. And they heard Jesus' command to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to all the corners of the world. But the world does not have corners. <clears throat> All parts of this sphere sharing the good news. Good news. And it's not about politics. It's not about all that stuff. It's about just plain old love. If we believe in Jesus, we believe in love. Langston Hughes, a black man in the 20s and 30s, and part of the Harlem Renaissance, shares an experience of his boyhood. These white boys were throwing snowballs at him with rocks in. On, on one side of the street because he was black. And then he started seeing snowballs coming from across the street but hitting the white boys. And he looked to see where those snowballs were coming from and it was coming from another white boy. And he looks at that moment in his history, historical background and he realizes love is love regardless of the color of the skin. That's we are called to be that person. If someone is being bullied, we step up and say, no. We proclaim God's good news. Not what just is temporary good news. Belief leads to our action. And we cannot hide from our beliefs, whatever they are. We will be who we will be, what we believe. Do we believe in Jesus the Christ? And love will spill out. In Jesus' name. Amen.